SQL or SQL. Objectives. So the objective of this uh, video is to determine the use of SQL or SQL and compare SQL with DML and DDL. So you will learn, you will learn later on what are DMLs and DDLs. And of course, to create a SQL or SQL query. So SQL or SQL. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And SQL allows you to access a database. So it is the language that we use to access the database. And SQL is an ANSI or American National Standard uh, Institute. So it's a standard computer language. And SQL can execute queries against a database. That means we can uh, view records or information from a database. SQL can retrieve data from a database, so all data that uh, similar with queries. And SQL can insert new records in a database. We can delete records from a database. We can update records in a database. And most of all, SQL is easy to learn. So these are things that we should know about SQL. SQL is standard, but so unfortunately, there are many different versions of SQL language. But to be in compliance with the ANSI standard, they must support the same major keywords in a similar manner, such as select, update, delete, insert, where, and others. So in other words, whether you're using MySQL, you're using Oracle, you're using a SQL Server, there will be some similarities. Maybe around 60 to 80% will be similar. SQL tables. A database must contain at least one table. And this table is identified by name. So there should be a name. A table should have a name. And a table contains rows or records of data. SQL queries. With SQL, we can query a database and have a result set return. So the result is called a result set. So example, we have select last name from person. So that's an example of a SQL query. And this query, for example, may give us this result. So it will give us the last name of uh, maybe persons inside or stored in this table. So this one is a table and this one is a field. And you'll learn more of this as we uh, go on with our slides. Now, we also have what we call the DML or the Data Manipulation Language. So the DML is composed of the select statement, uh, which, have, which we have uh, seen a while ago, which actually extracts data from a database table. And then we also have the update. That's why it's called Data Manipulation Language. We have the update. So updates data in a database table. So from the word update. Delete will delete data from the database table. And insert or insert into inserts new data into a database table so these are the commands that we can use to manipulate data in our database we also have uh, what we call the ddl or the data definition language so it is where we use to define the data to be used by the database and here are some important ddls these are create table so, basing from the command itself, this is used to create a new database table. We have alter table. So, alters or changes a database table. So, if there are things you would like to change in your table, let's say, for example, you would like to add a column, you would like to change a data type of a column, then uh, you have to make use of alter table. Drop table deletes the database table. Let's say you are not going to use this table anymore, then you can drop a table. We can also use create index. So it creates an index. Uh, the index is usually our search key. And we can also drop or delete an index. So drop index is the command to delete an index. So these are examples of DDLs. Now let's proceed to the SQL select statement. The select statement is used to select data from a table. 
and the tabular result, so the result is in tabular form, is stored in a result table or it is called the result set. So it, it is also uh, in the form of table inside the memory of your computer. So the format or the syntax for the select statement is select. So this is the keyword. So we always have the word select followed by the following. It can be asterisk or it can be the names of the fields or it can be expressions. And then after that, we have from and then the name of the table. So if you're going to look at these examples, we have select asterisk. So we can use asterisk from persons. So the asterisk is actually used or means that we're going to show all fields inside this table. So from table. So persons here is the name of the table. Asterisk will be the fields. In the next example, we have select. So your last name, comma, first name. So these are fields. These are examples of fields. Then from, then persons is again the name of the table. So we should always have the select and the from clause. And then we have here. So this will be changed depending on what you would like to uh, have in your result set. And this will always change depending on the name of the table. So let's try this one in an actual database. Uh, first, sorry. First, I will be uh, I will be opening or I will be starting my my SQL database. So I have your X um, X app actually contains the Apache, which is a web server, and MySQL, which is a database server. So I can open my SQL. So that means it is already open, and this is the port that MySQL is using. So if it is already open, I can now connect to the database. Now I'm going to use an application called MySQL command line. But before I'll do that, I'll first uh, open a command window or command prompt window so by typing cmd enter key this will open a command window now if you install x um usually uh the mysql command line client is stored in the bin folder so i'll first change to the root directory that's the root directory of drive c CDX, um, I'm going to uh, go to the, the XAM directory, then CD MySQL. I am now on the MySQL directory. And inside the MySQL directory, I have here my bin or binary directory. This is where I can, I have my MySQL command line client. And the command for that is MySQL. Now, I'm going to specify the user. So in this case, uh, I have the user root, so this is just a the database I use for developing. So I don't have any password for this, but of course in the actual uh, setup, most probably you have a username and a password. But in my case, I have only I don't have a password, so I'm going to specify only the user. So once I press Enter key, I am now inside the command line MySQL command line client. So this is now my MySQL prompt. Now let's say I would like to know what are the database databases that I can have access to. So I can type show databases. So these are the databases that are stored or that can be accessed by my MySQL command line client. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, I'm only going to use an ex a, a database. Uh, I'm going to use the sample database. So to use a sample database, I will just type use and then sample, then followed by a semicolon. Then you press enter key. So it says here database change. This means now that my default database is the sample database. And then I can place here show table so that I will know what are the tables inside my sample 
little base. So I have here the depth and the amp table. So I have here two tables. So based from our slide a while ago, I can type select, that's my keyword, <coughs> followed by asterisk. So that means all fields from and then followed by the name of the table. So I have my amp table. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can type select asterisk from M and then followed by a semicolon. So a semicolon is used to indicate uh, the end of the command and it means also that you are uh, requesting MySQL to execute the command. <coughs> so this is now my result set. I have here the employee number, name, department number, salary, manager, hire date, and commission. <coughs> I can also do that with the other table, the depth table. So I can type select asterisk from the <coughs> excuse me. Let's go back to my slide. <coughs> uh, no, let's let's have an example of this one first, wherein we can choose the name of the table. So let's go back to my, my SQL command prompt. Now these are the names of the fields. These are the names of the fields. These are the names of the fields. Now you can also use describe the command describe and then the table name to view what are the fields in a particular table. So if I type describe M, notice here I have here my field names and their data types and other information. So if I type describe depth, this will also display the fields in this table. So this is a handy uh, command that we can use to display the field names of a particular table. So let's say I would like to show the name of the employee, the salary of the employee, and the commission of the employee. So we have here employee name, salary, and commission. And then from, and then the name of the table, from M. Then once I press enter key, so you notice it will only display these columns that I actually specified. So you have the name, salary, and commission. Okay, let's go back to my slide. <clears throat> Next, we have the distinct statement. The distinct keyword is used to return only distinct or different values. So example is, oh, the syntax will be select distinct followed by the column names, then from the table name. So example is select distinct company from orders. So this will display only unique company. Let's try in, it in our actual database. Let's say, for example, I type here select depth no from M. So uh, the employees actually belong to several departments or department numbers. So you notice I have here ones, twos, and threes. So of course, it is not yet unique or distinct. So what if I type select distinct depth no from M. So this time around, this will only display the unique values, which are actually one, two, and three. So that's the purpose of the distinct keyword. Let's proceed. Now we have the order by clause. The order by keyword is used to sort the result. So for example, we have select as we, uh, select from so the same and then after this we have ordered by the field either in ascending or descending order by default it is in ascending order so example you have select company order number from orders ordered by company if we if we want to display in descending order so company, and then we have this order by company, and then we just type the word DSC. And we can also have multiple keys. So for multiple keys, select from orders, order by company, order number. 
So it should be uh, sorted by company, then by order number. Okay, so let's try this. So let's say I have here select asterisk from M. That's my output. So what happens if I type select asterisk from M, order by E name? You notice now that my result set is sorted according to name. So it is now alphabetically arranged. So I can also type select asterisk from M, order by salary. So this will display the records sorted by salary from lowest to highest. So what if I want it, I want it to be displayed by salary but in descending order. So I'll just use the uh, DS, DSC uh, keyword. So this time around, it is from highest to lowest. I can also have uh, multiple keys. Select asterisk, or let's say select depno, e name, salary, kong from M. So this time, order by depno then by e name. So I have multiple keys. So what will be the result? So first, all of those, the, the uh, my main key here is department number. So you notice the department number is sorted from one lowest to highest, one, two, three. And for each department, so if you're going to view this, the name should be arranged in alphabetical order. So if you're going to view those from department 1, the names are arranged in alphabetical order. For department 2, again in alphabetical order. For department 3, also in alphabetical order. So that is the use of multiple keys. So in summary, so SQL is composed of DMLs, DL, DDLs, and also DCL, but it's not discussed in this chapter. Select statement is used to select or retrieve records from a table. And select distinct is used to select unique values from a table. And then the order by clause is used to arrange or sort results. Thank you very much for viewing this video.